Hi, I'm Selma Benoit. I'm back with the pre-release material. Today I'm solving task 3 in pseudocode. Now, looking from the last video in our Python implementation of task 3, we followed five steps. First, we changed all the data in trains up tickets and trains down tickets that was closed back to their value of zero tickets. Then, we initialized two arrays, one to hold how many passengers went up on the up trains and passengers down was an array to hold how many passengers went down on the down trains. After that we calculated the total amount of money that was received that day and the total number of passengers that traveled that day and we displayed it. For number four we displayed the total number of passengers on each train and the total amount of money that each train brought, brought in and in step five we extracted the train with the most number of passengers. So here's step one. At the bottom, we can see it in Python code. And on the right, these are the first eight lines of pseudocode. So we have a for loop, and this for loop checks all the trains. If the trains up tickets of count is equal to closed, then assign a new value, assign trains up tickets of count to be zero. And same for the trains down tickets. If trains down tickets of count is equal to closed, then trains down tickets of count is now equal to zero. Next and if next count. In step two of our task three, we initialize two new arrays. So here it is in pseudocode at line nine and 10. Passengers up is equal to zero for elements, and all these elements are initialized to zero. Passengers down is also an array of size four. It's of type integer, and it's initialized to zero, 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 zero. So in lines 11 to 16, we have a for loop and it's going for count is from one to three. Now I had a comment where somebody was asking, why are we only taking count for three iterations? Here's the reason. We want this loop to iterate for the nine o'clock train, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 13 o'clock, 14 o'clock. We don't want to put the same arithmetic operation as we did on the 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 o'clock trains to the 16 o'clock train because the 16 o'clock train has a total of 640 possible passengers on it so the arithmetic is different. So in this case we're going to have a for loop which will take care of the first six trains and then we're going to manually update the values for the 15 o'clock train and the 16 o'clock train according to their own arithmetic. So as you can see, starting from line 11 for count, count runs from 1 to 3. Line 12, passengers up of count is equal to 480 minus trains up tickets of count. For example, let's say count equals 1. That means we're talking about the 9 o'clock train. And let's say 20 passengers went. So how many passengers went? If you're taking the data from the trains up tickets, it's 480 minus 460, which is equal to 20. You can go ahead and print, you know, this train, the nine o'clock train had 20 passengers. Line 14, we're doing the same thing for the trains going down the mountains. The passengers down is equal to 480 minus what's stored in trains down tickets of count. And you can go ahead and print trains down times had of count had passengers down of count. After that, in line 17, 18, 19, 20, we do the same thing that we did above, but we're doing it for the 15 o'clock train and the 16 o'clock train. Now on to step three. We want to calculate the total money that was received that day and the total passengers that traveled that day. Whenever we have a totaling algorithm, as you can see in line 21, the first thing we need to do, we need to initialize total passengers equals zero. This is a variable in which we will keep adding the data until we finished our for loop for all the trains. So now here's the for loop in line 22 to 25, where for count, count runs from 1 to 4. Total passengers is equal to total passengers plus passengers up of count. And total passengers is equal to total passengers plus passengers down of count. Next count. So by the end of this for loop, we will have stored in the total passengers variable the total number of passengers that day and in line 26 we can print the total passengers on all the trains today is total passengers this reminds me of a possible past paper question what data structures might you have used in task 3 or what variables so you could say there is a variable total passengers it's of type integer and it's used to store how many passengers were on all the trains throughout the day
Now in line 27, we have a variable total money equals 0, 0.0. It's a variable that's going to store all the amount of money that we collected throughout the day and it's of type real. So we've initialized it. We're ready to keep totaling from all the trains. So we have a for loop for count is from one to four. This loop is going to iterate for all the trains, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 13 o'clock, 14 o'clock, 15 o'clock, and 16 o'clock trains. So in line 29, we keep adding to total money all the trains up money of count and in line 30 total money equals total money plus trains down money of count next count we'll make sure that this loop continues four times finally in line 32 we print the total money from all the trains today is total money so in step four we're going to display the total number of passengers on each train and the total amount of money made on each train so by each train trip kind of like what you see in this table train times passengers for each train and money collected from each train. It's really simple. We're going to print on line 33 those titles, train times, passengers, and money collected. On line 34, we're starting a for loop. Again, count is iterating from one to four. In line 35 and 36, we're just printing all the data that's stored in our arrays, trains up times, passengers up, and trains up money. Same for line 36, trains down times, train passengers down, and trains down money. And next count allows us to iterate through all those arrays. Finally, we've come to step five. Step five is extracting the train with the most number of passengers. So we are following a finding the maximum algorithm. We need to start off by initializing most up and most down. And we also need index up most and index down most. So we're initializing all of those to zero. Then in line 42, we're starting a four count for loop and we're checking if passengers up of count is greater than most up then we're going to store that number we're going to store for example we had on the nine o'clock train we had a hundred passengers and a hundred is greater than zero so now we're going to store that hundred as the most so far and we're going to store the index one so we are tracking you know which train so far where it's located in the array had the most passengers we're going to do that same thing on line 47 48 49 50 for the passengers down trains so if passengers down of count is greater than most down replace most down with passengers down of count and store the index so index down most is equal to count and if next count by the end of this for loop in most up, we have the largest number of passengers on the trains going up. And in most down, we have the largest number of passengers in trains going down. So we're ready to check. Is most up greater than most down? If it is, then print the train with the most passengers is trains up times of index up. Else, most down must be, have more, must be a greater value. So print with the train with the most passengers is trains down times of index down most. Right, that was task three in pseudocode.